I am Chris Gardner of the Houston Round Ball Review. And joining me, taking time out of his busy schedule, is Mr. Eddie Nunez, the new vice president of intercollegiate athletics for the University of Houston. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, Chris. How are you, man? I'm doing great. Oh, let's Good. see. How, how long have you been in charge? About two and a half weeks. Maybe, maybe give or take a day or more here or there, but um, it's about two and a half weeks. And how much sleep have you gotten in those two and a half weeks? Oof, very little. Um, well, I, I don't. I, I didn't sleep a lot before, so I can't say that I'm sitting here say, uh, that I'm getting more or less. Um, I, what I am doing is I'm moving a lot more from event to an event to an event. Yesterday, I had the ability to go with Coach Sampson to and his kids to serve um, individuals, uh, uh, cancer patients. Uh, dinner. And then uh, from there, I went to another dinner. And so it's literally one after another after another. But uh, I enjoy that. That's that actually keeps me going. Have you met have with you all met of the uh, coaches? I have met with them. I have not sat down and had my one on one with every one of them. I'm working on that. But I have met them all. I've had a, a, an opportunity to sit with some of them uh, just talking, you know, just understanding who they are as people. I'm actually in the process as we speak right now of those meetings with with them. So I'm going through them. I, it, as I said to them, I'm not in a rush, and I don't want them to rush with it. If they've got practices and everything else, that's priority number one. And what is in these first meetings, from your perspective, what is your what are your expectations from them this season for any any of their sports, respective sports? Yeah, no, I, I think what first is getting to know who they are, how do they how how do they approach their their programs, um, understanding who their assistant coaches, what their expectations of their assistant coaches and their players are. Um, we talk a little bit about how I approach all our student athletes and what I expect from them. So it really is just getting to know each other, getting to know um, what we would, how we work, how we operate. As, I've, as I'll tell many of them, I'm not planning on being at every practice of yours. That's not my 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 expectation. My expectation is I'm going to be at some, and I'm going to come through some days and watch all of 30 seconds, and one day I might be there an hour or two. I said it, 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 it's – I want to be able to understand the programs. I want to understand how practices are conducted. I want to understand how the coaches interact with their kids. But I also want to see that off the field or off the courts. And so – um, understanding all that, and then ultimately me laying out my my expectations for this year. And I, look, I don't come in with any coach right now, and I'm going to say, look, you have to win a championship, or you have to do this. Look, that's our goal. We're going to work to compete for championships. But it, it's more than anything else. It's seeing them, learning, giving them an opportunity, and and understanding. And I've said this before. You might have, and I, maybe I even said it to you, so I apologize. But it's more so. Um, I, I want to help them get to a championship level. Mm -hmm. And that distance between where they are today and where that needs to be is my, my focus. That's what I need to help with. All this other stuff underneath it, that's for them and their coaches to be able to, to navigate. That's the stuff in the weeds that they can navigate. I need to know what those big incremental uh, increases need to be. And it's not just funding. It's, it's support. It's resource. It's everything else to win championships. In your intro press conference, you mentioned that your wife and daughter's Obviously, your family guy, they, they had the final decision in this. But what about the job at UH piqued your interest? Um, and I've said this before, why not? I mean, this is there's so many great things about this. First of all, this community, let's put the University of Houston to the side right now. The job, I, I'm a big believer in understanding the community. Does the community embrace the opportunity? Is there opportunities to grow that presence within that community? Um, do I see my family being a part of that? All those those are important factors. And for to be honest with you, everyone was check, 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 check. And then when I got to this job, the reality is it's a Big 12 opportunity. There's not many of these that are that are like this. And to know that it has had success, it has tradition, it has the ability to come out and make some noise. And look, ooh, basketball is doing unbelievable. Coach Sampson and his staff are have have established an unbelievable program there and I want to continue to help him not just be where we are but build on it and, and compete for bigger championships every on a consistent basis but that takes resources that takes time so I needed to look at the whole program what challenges existed what opportunities presented themselves and then would there be alignment and I know this is crazy 
But when I went through the process, you know, there were times that I maybe wasn't seeing everything the way I wanted to see it because I needed to know for certain if those alignments were there with everyone. And when you have your football and your basketball coach in their line, you got two coaches that are supporting each other. That shows all the rest of the coaches that, hey, we're all in this together. Because mm-hmm. when you have a divide in those two or three co- top coaches, others say, well, if they're not all on the same page. Why do we need to be? And I think as you start seeing all those different pieces come together, um, the alignment from the president, understanding what I expect and what she expects and what the university expects. I am all about the university. I'm all about the, the, the athletic department. So all that had to be a part of it. So I would say it's a city. Then I looked at the job and then I looked at the alignment and all those really checked the boxes for me. When it comes to resources, what does that entail in your opinion? Um, a little bit of everything, a little bit of everything. It's, it's fan support. It's the trust, the, the fan base. I think that's important. Um, we've got to do our part because as, as I'll always say, the, 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 what gets our kids really motivated to play the best they can be is to have a fans there in this, in their venue, supporting them to the best of their ability. Um, so that's part of it. I would tell you the other side of it, of course, is financially. There's the financial side, which is very, very important. And we've got to do a better job. We've done some great things in some areas, but we've got to grow some of the areas, um, our multimedia rights. We've got to grow better, bigger partnerships and not just bigger in respect to big companies, but growing our portfolio. You know, when we look at our portfolio of what is Houston Cougars, we've got to grow that portfolio as much as we can. So that to me is a big one. Um, and then we've got to we've got to get we've got to be on the forefront when it comes to NIL. And I'm coming in a little bit behind right now with the season already started. And but I'm working with our collective, working with the with our conference, working with our staff here to understand how do we navigate the next several steps so that we're not falling behind, so that we're not just aligned with with the rest of the conference we want to be on the forefront so all those are ways we can grow our resources um but our resources have to match our expectations if we don't have the resources to achieve certain levels then we have to sit here and say okay we've got to be honest with ourselves or we've got to figure out how to get those resources to that level so that's um that's my that's my job that's our job as as a department um, we've got to work to figure that out. What has been, well, I'll go back. Your yeah. time out in Mexico, NILs really yeah. started like three years ago. What was the response at New Mexico from alums and supporters? And then how does that compare to just this brief window here at Houston? Yeah, hesitancy when I first got, when it first came out. I think everybody was hesitant. Everybody needed to understand what this meant. Um, when it changed from a, everybody thought that collectives could be 501c3s. And so you're going to get some kind of tax credit to no, you can't do that anymore, or it's hard to be able to do it. That also changed the trust ability of, of those fans and saying, well, I don't want to know if I want to give, if I'm not going to get anything in return, well, I'm just playing a kid. And what happens if this kid does something wrong or this kid does, uh, doesn't represent me because I'm giving, you know, as a donor or giving money. So I think we had to get over all those, um, those thoughts and try to have a lot of clarity. We came a long way at New Mexico and I did too, me personally. I was very hesitant in the beginning from 100% supporting it because I needed to know. I needed to be able to say, if our fan base is looking at me and saying, we, we will trust you, Eddie, if you tell us this is what to do, I needed to do my due diligence. And so that's what I did that first year. Um, I supported it from a distance, but 100% head first, full in. I wasn't, and they'll tell you I wasn't. And it wasn't because I was against it. I just needed to be able to tell the people what they needed to hear. And so we came a long way. Uh, right now, I mean, some of the money that the collective was able to get get there over the last couple of years has been not just one of the top in the group of five, but actually better than many power power programs. So proud of it, but we had to do it in steps. I think here you're going to see the same thing. I'm all in this time because I know enough to say I'm supportive of NIL and I'm supportive of of a collective. How do we marry what we want to? How do we get to the final stage of what's going to be the best for our fans is is what I'm tasked to do. And working with Lincoln, uh, you know, all, all, all the, the, the individuals that you would say, um, I think it's important for me to, to be able to, to learn 
who the players are, who our supporters are on both sides. We, we, and you're going to hear me say it too. So again, you're going to, this is a constant theme with me is I want our fans to be able to give above and beyond. If, if I, right now I need them to continue to support Cougs athletics. I mean, they need to support us because we need to get ourselves where we, we have to be to compete. But at the same time, I know they can do a little bit more and, and that little bit more. If we tell them where it's going and how it's going to be done and how much it's going to benefit our program, it could be a special, special ride for all of us. Have you had a chance to think of ideas so far of, of what to say to alums, sponsors, would be sponsors or corporations to get them on board going forward? Um, first and foremost is getting them to get to know who I am. If, if they are going to invest in us, they have to know that from a leadership position here, that what our vision is, how we will go forward through that mission, what are those values that we that, that we look at when we look at our department, how decisions are going to be made, how we're going to do things. So more than anything else is getting to know them, getting them to know who I am as a person and how I'll, I'll, I'll lead this department, um, how our student athletes will represent themselves, how we will carry those 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 pieces so that they feel confident. Enough. Then after that, it's it's truly letting them see for themselves the, the benefits. Again, we have the ability to look at men's basketball here and say, you see, you see how good things can come from supporting those student athletes. Now, of course, we can always do more. We could always be better. But we have a program that we can look at and say, with the program being built with the right culture, the right coach, the right mindset. Great things happen. Add on the NIL, add on the, the possibility for multimedia rights, becoming a bigger partnership. All those things can really just elevate the, the, the whole program from one standard to another. Question for you. I'm not going to assume yeah. because of your last name. Do you speak Spanish? I do. Very fluent. Yes. OK, because personally, I think that is an untapped market for you. the Spanish speaking market, Spanish speaking alums. Yep. So just so I'm glad to hear that. Yes. So I'm going to, I'm I'm gonna gonna be hitting. urge you to do that. So, yes, please do. Go ahead. No, I'm, I'm going to be hitting some of the Hispanic associations. I've already talked to numerous uh, uh, coordinators for these groups, and I've told them I want to be I want to be involved. And, you know, we're in Hispanic Heritage Month right now. And so the ability to tap into my heritage as a Cuban-American and um, in our community that has the Hispanic community, that's su such pr such a proud community. Um, we've got to do a better job. And I'm, that's what I'm here. I hope to be able to tap into it as much as I can um, in the future. But I know right now I am going to be in as many of these um, events that I can be uh, trying to show my culture, trying to show who I am. And it's it's interesting when when we have a lot of our staff and, and supporters that do speak Spanish and are fluent in Spanish. They come up to me and they ask me that question. And I start talking back to them. They're like, Okay, they, they get a smile on their face. They're like, okay, I like this. And so, look, I, I, I'm proud, proud to be a Cuban American, proud of my family, proud of the heritage. And uh, I, I wouldn't be here where I am if it wasn't for them. So um, I love to give back and the ability to talk another language with with somebody that's that's may, might be their native language. Um, it, it's 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 a great feeling. It really is. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> From previous your previous locations. Yeah. What was the this is this is kind of a strange question. Okay. <laughs> at your previous stops, yeah. what was the perception of Houston Athletics at your previous location, like LSU? Yeah. Really? Um, I would tell you during my time at LSU, there was uh it was kind of a two-sided one, I would say, because at some points it was a, a program that maybe wasn't at the at, totally at the level that it probably could have been. And then at other times, when you look at it, um, football during a certain, a certain period there was fairly successful here. And so we saw it in different ways as a department, I would tell you had the ability to really truly maximize um, some things. And I don't know if they, it truly got to that point, but it's been a program that has continually been on the rise. And that's one of the things that I've always noticed. And any of my stops is, this program is continually, and that's a testament to those who came here before me, you know, from honestly, from Mac and, and Hunter and, and Pez, who, everyone, 
that had an opportunity to continue to rise this, raise the level of this program. To me, it's something I watched. Um, when I got when when I get, when I was in New Mexico, it's a little different because now I'm seeing them make that jump. And as we're in, we we're all group of five programs, I took over a program that was um, in a dismal situation when I got there. Mm -hmm. And great people, great opportunities. Some programs were doing really well, but as a whole, it had a, an abundance of challenges. I was able to grow that program, but as I looked at my peers. Groups like the like the University of Houston and University of Central Florida and others, you're like, gosh, they're they're, they're making that jump. They're making they're, they've set themselves up to make that leap to a power program, and that to me has always been a special because you saw it happening, but all of a sudden when it happened, you're like, darn. I mean, how uh, you know we got a lot of work to do, and that actually that that energized me more to really work harder because. I never wanted to put a uh, be in that that side again, and so the the, the 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 leaps that New Mexico has taken over the last three years will give it a chance one day. Um, it still has some work to do, and and we knew that, but it's come a long way. And programs like Houston really helped motivate us to continue to stay on the forefront of things. What are your impressions of Commissioner Britt Yormark? Um, innovative. Innovative, creative, um, always looking to find out what is out there, what possibilities exist. Uh, I got to know Brett a little bit um, very uh, right before, right when he took over. Honestly, when he, when he had the first opportunity here as a commissioner, I got to know him a little bit, and then hadn't really kept in contact as much because our path went different ways. And um, but even in the short time. I'm really excited to have the ability to work with him with his, with the Big 12 office. I mean, we we the Big 12 is in a special place right now. We can really make noise on all fronts, and I think he is leading the charge when it comes to a lot of this. Um, we have some great peers. I mean, there's some uh, there's some athletic directors in this league that I've known for years that I am so excited to be able to work with them. Um, not some again, and some. For the first time, so I, I honestly, it's the the conference, the peers, the schools. It, it's really a special time, and Brett's leading that charge. I want to ask you what, if you can say, mention, touch on your ideas or any of the ideas regarding the multimedia piece. You kind of hinted at it a few times, but but what does that entail, possibly? So our multimedia rights is everything from naming rights to TV to sponsorships and everything else that you can imagine that that, that encompass the world of, of of multimedia. Our radio, our radio show, our coaches shows, all that falls underneath that umbrella. And we're in, we're in an opportunity right now, um, looking at what's possible with our current incumbent that's that's in place right now, which is Learfield Sports, to looking at what else is out there. And we, you know, Houston's had a great partnership with Learfield. Either way we go about it, if it's a new company, if it's Learfield, what they're going to get from me is somebody who's more intentional in regards to everything that goes in that area. It's not, I don't want somebody out there just selling our program as a representative of our program. I want to be involved. I want that group to know that they're a part of our department. So they should feel like they're not just an exterior company or somebody that's out there selling Houston's rights. It's we're all in this together. So it's going to help us with some of the smaller businesses that maybe never felt the love that that we can offer them. It might not be for everybody, but I cannot sit here and just say we're going to go after the big the big corporations and not think about what makes Houston special. So we got some work to do. It's going to it's going to tell sitting down with these companies, sitting down and, and seeing what they're going to present to us and how they feel they can mirror what they want to do to what I feel we need to do. So um, I'm excited. I really am. I think that can be a the, the first of many steps that are going to help us incrementally raise our resources. Final moments with you, Mr. Nunez. Yep. Thank you again. Eddie, please come on now. All right, Eddie. <laughs> Have you thought about um, corporate sponsors for? The football field, the logos on the football field. 
We have, we have, and uh, those are things that we're trying to navigate right now. We have some names already on the, on the current field, as you know, mm -hmm. and so being respectful to those individuals and their families that helped us um, get to where we are today. At the same time, seeing how we can we can do it classy. We don't uh, look nothing against NASCAR, and everybody always uses them as an example because they have a thousand different sponsors and everywhere you can possibly imagine. I, I think there's going to be a way to do it to really generate the the interest of some some high profile companies and some others that can maybe do it and still not be uh, full of corporate sponsors that, that you kind of miss the actual game. We're there still to watch a football game, watch the Cougs, those student athletes compete at a high level. So we want to be able to balance some of that sponsorship, some of that component. Um, there's other ways to do it than just on the field. There's other things that right now are not being taken advantage of, to be honest with you. I'm looking around the stadium and I'm starting to see areas where we, we need to do more. And so add that side of it. And I, and I, I want to mention this as well, because I think this is a big part of it. When we talked our resources, we got to talk merchandise. We got to talk licensing. We got to talk areas like that, that are key for us to be able to have success. So, all these different pieces on top of what you mentioned with the naming rights or, or some kind of sponsorships on the field or on the courts or anything else are all going to be on the table. I'm throwing everything against the wall and some may stick, some may stick longer than others, but um, I want our staff to be, to look at everything from every different angle. Where do things stand regarding funding for the completion of the uh, football ops building? Actually fairly well. It, it fairly well. And, and, Look, I, I think there is the understanding that there might be some, even if we move in next year, that there's still some things that we still have to pay for or a debt that we have to pay or something off. I, I'm not afraid of that because the fact is there's still so much opportunity for naming rights or anything else in the stadium that could help or in the venue that can help offset those costs. Um, I want to be able to to start focusing on other other capital projects as well. I think there, I think our uh, some of our facilities need a little TLC. They don't need to be overhauled. They don't need to be built from scratch. What we need to do is we need to make them more fr fan friendly. We need to make them more convenient. We need them to be to be venues that people are proud of. And so I'm gonna I'm looking at everything as we speak, um, how we can do it better. And so as we go forward, it's not about spending money to spend money. It's about spending money in the right places that can make an impact so um but yeah it's going extremely well actually we, we got some additional one i signed yesterday um was for six figures which is good it's another naming opportunity within the building so it, it's the staff here has been doing a, a tremendous job selling the vision of that facility and it's seeing it come to light it's pretty pretty special final question for you yeah is there one thing that you want to accomplish big or small, let's say within the next month or by the end of the year, keep it simple. Simpler. Yeah, I, I'll tell you, it, it, it's a corny one, I think, because people will say, uh, you know, that's, that's the answer everybody's going to say. I got to change the culture and not in a negative way, in the culture that I feel needs to be representative of who we are. So it's changing culture so that it meets what the vision of what I'm, what I feel we need to do. So if, if I'm looking, if we're having this conversation a year from today and I can look back and say, we have done a great job moving or changing the culture so that the majority or all the people are moving in this direction, then we've made huge success because my time in New Mexico, all the championships, and I said this at the press conference, doesn't matter what championships I've won, doesn't matter how many buildings we built, doesn't matter, not even just, it was when I looked back, the culture that was established in the department, the way everybody supported each other, the trust the fan base had on us. And that was all because we established a culture that everybody could be proud of. So I know that is the, the root to us having tremendous success is having a culture that people are proud in, in house so that everybody externally looks at us and says, look, this is one unit, not just a, a parcel of silos. Thank you, sir. And I'm extending an open invitation to you. Andrew right. knows that as well. So when you have yeah. time and, and obviously on the calendar, we can do this 12 months or not for sure, but you know, <laughs> monthly, yeah. quarterly, whatever, 
suit you. I love to yeah. chat with you and to give everyone updates on the program because folks who know me, they know I'm a proud alum of the University of Houston. I tell everybody that. Yep. But I, I will also critique when I think it's necessary. But my love for the school is is unwavering. Yeah, so, you listen, you, you should. You know, at the end of the day, if you're if there's a gripe and we 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 did something to earn that gripe, well, then you can do it. And it's up to us to be able to have that conversation and try to make it right. So uh, we're probably going to have something at some point, Chris, that you're going to be like, I don't like it. Yeah, it's OK. Let's have the conversation. I am. I, I just I know that we're going to have many conversations. Some might be offline that when I see you and walk you know, at an event or in passing. Uh, and I and I want people to have those conversations with me. So and then absolutely, anytime we want to sit down, we'll we'll do it. We'll make them work. And so um, this this is fun. The more I can tell people about how we're progressing as a department, the better we're going to be. Thank you, Ed Nunez, the VP of Intercollegiate Athletics for the University of Houston. Thank you, sir. Take care. Thank you. Appreciate it.